This is Feed Your Mind, and so we've done reports on possible giant trees. We have saw lots of photographic evidence, and there's these mountainous areas that look like mountain plateaus, some are saying, but others are saying these are actually giant tree stumps, and that would really paint a new picture of the history of Earth. And this type of research should be investigated, but the scientific community would never look into this type of stuff. They always um, just ignore this type of information. So it would be great if we had some experts who could actually verify or figure out a way to verify if these are actually giant trees. But there is a scripture I came across that might um, add some insight to this information. And so this scripture is Daniel chapter 4, verse 11. And the scripture goes on to say, The tree grew large and strong, and its top reached the sky. Well, it says the top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. And so that's interesting how it doesn't just say the top touched the sky. It goes on to say it was visible to the ends of the earth. So it adds that extra sentence on there to verify that this was not just your tall tree that you see in a forest or something. This tree is being described as uh, what could have been one of the giant trees that we're talking about. Um, an interesting observation about these giant trees is is there any areas where there's lots of these plateaus around each other? Because usually trees are actually in groups. Trees actually communicate with each other through the root systems. And, you know, there it seems like trees actually are usually a community. They're, they, they have unique capabilities. Like I said, they communicate with each other through the root systems. And you usually see groups of trees together. So we're going to have to look into this more and see, is there any evidence of several of these trees grouped together or were these trees sporadic and just spaced apart, possibly? Um, even if they are um, not grouped together, if it's just like one area that just looks like a giant tree, tree stump, the fact that there's several of these things and all across the world add some interesting probabilities to this. Like what's the chance of there being not just one area that looks like a tree, but there's lots of these areas that look like giant tree stumps. And so we would have to kind of figure out how many of these areas are there and maybe count them up. And if there's like, if, if people can find like 50, or a hundred or not even that much something. Maybe if we could just find like 20 areas that look like this, that would be a, that would be good information to, to know like how many of these areas has been discovered. Cause that adds to the probabilities. You can't just have one of these areas and say that's evidence. But when you got lots of these areas, that definitely adds proof. And also with this Bible scripture, do you think this is referencing the giant trees? It, it sounds like it is. So then there's the tales of Jack and the Beanstalk that comes to mind. And with that tale, they used a beanstalk, but that could have easily been a giant tree. Maybe, you know, because like in the story, they had these special beans that grew this beanstalk, but the seeds could have been actually seeds that grow giant trees. And these trees would have been massive, which would make you question what was really going on back then. Uh, Cause there is lots of talks of, well, before the flood, they're saying knowing them might've been massive. They might've been almost giants. And there's lots of, um, research on this where they're saying from the time of Adam down to Noah people were a different size and so if people were a different size it, there's definitely evidence that 
other things would have been massive as well. Mud Fossils University has uncovered a lot of information about these giants that might have lived in the past. But then back to the Jack and the Beanstalk thing, another clue in that is where they talk about the the giants. Like he he climbed this giant tree and ended up in a heaven area where there was giants. So there was a it sounds like he made it to a layer above the firmament cuz um my research has led me to information that shows that there's at least seven firmaments above us. So there would be a uh, landing area above us and that could possibly be where um, what's his name Nimrod where Nimrod was trying to get to when he was creating the Tower of Babel I've done uh, an in-depth video on that on my Future Mind 2 channel well on this channel so you can check that out if you want and um I find it interesting how this Jack and the Beanstalk story, you know, came about. Like, was this a clue for um, the general public? They like to tell the general public a lot of information without really telling them, but they like the information to be there. So maybe that was um, a clue for us. There seems to be a lot of clues around if 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 you know how to look for them. Also, another clue would be kind of be like the the Christmas tree where they have this tree with a star on top for a Christmas tree. And people used to worship that type of stuff. Actually, the Bible just talks about it, about people cutting down trees and putting them in their homes and decorating it with gold and stuff to worship it. So maybe that whole tradition comes from something to do with possibly these giant trees and with the Christmas tree, it's possible that there's a connection there with the Polaris star. So maybe this tree is at the center of the earth. And maybe that's why they call it the North Pole. Because maybe that's a historical clue where they know of this tree, what they're calling a tree that reaches the heavens. And just like the Bible scripture was saying. And if it's in the center, at the top of that tree would be the Polaris star. And and so the Polaris star is visible from a lot of areas. And maybe that tree was actually reaching to it. And so that's a possibility. And so I want to know what you all think about this information what do you think about that scripture? Do you think that scripture is referencing a giant tree or is it just talking about a normally tall tree like we see in the redwood forest and stuff? Or are they going out of their way like it seems where they're saying it was visible to the ends of the earth, which is an extra description that suggests the possibility of the scripture talking about a giant tree. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section. As far as what I think, um, I definitely, um, I'm still kind of on the fence on this one. I definitely wouldn't rule it out. It almost looks like I'm more leaning towards the possibility of giant trees than not, though. Because I know for sure there's several of these, um, what looks like tree stumps. I don't know the exact count, like I said earlier, but... I've saw several of these uh, these areas that look like giant tree stumps. So the possibility that there's more than one. I mean, the fact that there's more than one makes me believe that this is, there's probably something to this story. Now, how did they get cut down? I'm hearing that there was um, they were instructed to cut these trees down, and there might have been angels or giant angels or. Was it the Nephilims who cut them down? It would probably be more the angels, though, I was thinking, because, well, it could have been either. And the reason why they would have cut it down would have been to cover up this history because the general public of this day, they don't really believe in too much stuff outside of the mainstream narrative. So 
if it was the Nephilims and the Titans that cut these trees down, that would have been the cut to prepare for the future, for, for the time of now where people don't believe in stuff like that. So they had to remove the trees or if it was coming, if, if it was the angels who cut the trees down, that would have been um, possibly the same type of reasoning behind it. It was to uh, remove the evidence that's whatever whoever cut these down it looks like the reasoning was to remove evidence and it looks like you know you can always remove stumps too so some of these remaining what looks like tree stumps but they're saying they're possibly mountains well if if there's not a group of them around it could have just been so that it could have been related to them removing the stumps as well Maybe most of the stumps were removed too, and then some were some were left remaining, possibly. But I don't know. Um, not really ready to say for sure if these trees existed or not. I'd like to know what you all think in the comment section, and we'll brainstorm on it. So um, I'll leave. I'm gonna leave some links if you wanna support the channel. I'm accepting as little as one dollar donations if you wanna help keep feed your mind online. I'm going to be putting out some documentary style videos out on my Patreon page. So make sure you're um, subscribed over there. I'm also going to leave links to my free email newsletters. And I'm going to leave links to my social media. Plus, I'm going to be at Feed Your Mind 3 dropping videos as well. So make sure you're subscribed over there. Also, check out HQH2O Water if you want to get rid of the fluoride in your water and, and have the best drinking water possible and the most purest. Um, so that's about it for today. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. This has been Feed Your Mind signing off.